Hello, everyone. Welcome to the uh, website Scorch process for uh, February, whatever it is, 5th, 2013. Um, if you're listening to this uh, recording later, apologies for messing up the time. Um, my fault entirely. I, I, was, I spent half an hour looking for someone else to blame and could not find anyone, so it's all on me. Um, so let's get right to it. The, uh, as I said, the, the website scorch process varies a lot depending on what the website is and my mood that day. So today um, I want to do one based on five questions. Um, and this is useful. I do this, I do this a lot, and, and often I, I spend more time on one of the questions than others, and sometimes I ask different questions, but this is basically how I think about it. Um, so first one is, who's visiting? In other words, who is coming to your site um, that you're trying to convert? Very often, you know, and that's based a lot if you're doing search marketing on the keyword, or if it's, you know, SEO, the keyword they type into Google, um, if they're coming from Facebook or from an ad somewhere or typing it in directly or, you know, however they found out about you, you're attracting certain people. You know, so who are they? What, you know, what are, um, and, and you might need to differentiate between the people you're getting and the people you should be getting. That's often an issue where we find that we're actually marketing to the wrong people. And so then we, you know, nothing, nothing's going to work if it's people who, who don't have a basic uh, connection and need for, for what you're selling. So that's the first question, just who are they? And I like to start there because it's so easy to start with us, to start with our own website, with our own process, um, and, and not think about the person that we're trying to communicate with. Um, question number two, why are they here? So again, the keyword can tell us, if they type in, you know, I'm looking for a uh, software to make a cookbook, well then you know that they're here for software to make a cookbook. Um, very often we don't have that direct information or it's more vague and we have to take some guesses and we can always test out those guesses. We can say that, you know, we're only going to craft our site to appeal to people who have a certain issue. Um, and so we're, we're, we'll be doing a selection there and saying, well, we don't care why everybody's here. We only care about the people who are here because they want a software for a cookbook as opposed to people who, you know, want to learn how to uh, publish their own cookbook and take it to Amazon and Barnes and & Noble and all that. That might be a different crowd. Third question, what do you want them to do? So this is a simple question about what's, you know, what's a conversion? So a lot of a lot of people who, who uh, sent in prep work for this webinar told me their conversion rates. So that means that there's some number on top and some number on the bottom, uh, and the number on the the bottom, you know, is the total number of people, and the and the number on the top is the ones who do that thing that we measured and that we care about. So whether it's filling out a request for quote, whether it's buying something, whether it's picking up the phone, um, right? We we want do. Um, next thing is why would they benefit from that particular action? Why would they, you know, we know why we want them to do it because it leads to a sale or a, a conversation we want to have, but why would they benefit from that action? And really what we're trying to do on a landing page is sell that action. We're not trying to sell the ultimate thing. We're trying to sell the very next thing we need them to do to keep the conversation going. So you want to think about what's in it for them to fill out the quote request, to watch the video, to download a free ebook, to join our newsletter, whatever it is. And finally, what would stop them from doing it? And there's two different types of things that tend to stop people from taking an action. One is, we can make it very hard for them on our website. We could have sort of poor structure, poor navigation, and it's just they just they look at it and they go, nah, "This is too much work. I can't figure out what they want me to do here. I can't find the button. There's a there's no phone number. You know, so it's just like they can't they can't drive the car because we've hidden the keys somehow, or we put the keys way up in a tree and they can't climb it." The other reason that stops people from doing it is, you know, we typically call them objections. I think of them as 
triggers to past fears. So everybody has done things, has made decisions in their life that they are not proud of, that they're not happy with. They make mistakes. We bought something and we, were, we felt like an idiot. We had buyer's remorse. We worked, with, we, we worked with someone and maybe our gut said not to, but we did it anyway because they had such a nice site and it seemed so great and our friends said they were great and it didn't work out. And we collect all this information. Every, every bad experience that we ever feel has sort of, we've contributed to by decision, that goes in the algorithm hopper. And they just sort of stay there. And whenever anything new comes up, however it manages to remind us of some past bad decision, that's an objection. So we, we want to think not, into, not just in terms of the objections that they'll have about our product, but how we remind them of mistakes they've made in the past. And those are pretty predictable. And there's not that many of them. And when we start thinking that way, we can craft our site as basically an objection answering machine. So those of you who've come here because you know me from AdWords, from search marketing, if you think about it, people come to your site already sold on, the, on your benefit. They were searching for you and they found you. So they, they really want you to succeed. So the goal of your site shouldn't be to like work really hard to convince them that they want something that they've already searched for, that they already said they want. It should be to anticipate and respond to these various types of objections, to, to clear away any obstacles so they feel comfortable that they're not going to make a mistake or that if they do make a mistake, it is completely reversible. In other words, the risk is on you, not on them. All right, so um, welcome. So let's t tell me a little bit about uh, PHI compared. And we can just work, yeah. work those, uh, those five questions. So well, first, tell us a little bit about the business, because you know, you know that, but we don't. So let's start with an extra question to help us out. Yeah, but PHI Compared is basically a, a lead generation um, website uh, using AdWords. And it's aimed at the health insurance market in the UK. OK. So um, how does, for those of us in the States, uh, how does the health insurance market work in the UK? Last time I was there, I could walk into any hospital and get free care from the NH, National Health Service, right? Has things yeah. have changed, I guess. Well, well uh, you can still pretty much get everything. Uh, I, I think what, uh, the, the UK health market works it, it, it's in terms of a, a kind of two-tier system where if you're you know, if you're using the basic National Health Service, service um, some of the choices you have about where you're treated, how long it's going to take, waiting lists and so on, um, kinds of doctors and consultants that you can use, they're restricted and, and uh, the, the, the private sector has some superb hospitals that, that it, it's basically an upgrade system if you like. You know, you can, you can be seen when you want to be seen, where you want to be seen, you can choose the doctor. You have much better facilities when you're in the hospital. So it, it, it's it's a it's a basic upsell on on what we all get as, as as part of the part of the package of being a UK citizen. Got it. And and so how how upscale does someone have to be to be a prospect? I see at the bottom it says a pound fifteen per week. So yeah. um, I mean, you know, a, but basically how 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 well off do folks have to be to to get private health insurance? I mean, not not particularly. Uh, obviously, we we quote uh, you know we, we quote the lowest rate or or one of the of the lower end of the range. It's not the lowest rate, but the lower end of the rate would be somebody who's you know uh, probably early twenties. Um, uh, it, it goes on it goes on age. Uh, it goes on pre-existing conditions. Uh, and, and pretty much, I'm, I'm guessing it, it, a little bit like it does in the states. You know that. that if, if you're 18 and you want a health insurance policy, it's going to cost you next to nothing. Mm -hmm. uh, but generally, I, I would say anybody um, that's kind of on, I don't know how, how, how it, you've got to be kind of be on above the average salary, I guess, for for it to work for you. Uh, but you don't have to be you don't have to be wealthy. Okay. It's a mid, so so you know middle class, upper middle class, I guess. Okay, great. So. Let's take a look. So, um, who's visiting and why are they here? And let's let since you do AdWords, what's the biggest keyword that sends traffic to this site? Well, it, it, uh, because I, I, again, I'm I, I'm speculating about the states, but the financial services keywords over here are very very competitive. 
they're, they're usually based on health insurance or medical insurance, but uh, it's it's really suicide to, 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 to bid for those because the, the words are ridiculously expensive. So we go for long tails, uh, sometimes involving um, you know com, uh, competitor names and so on within the rules of Google. Uh, but uh, but yeah, uh, health insurance, fast health insurance, cheap health insurance, uh, and variations thereof. Okay. Um, uh, so some some, some some form of health, cheap health insurance. Yeah, faster health insurance, uh, reliable health insurance, just variations on those keywords, and then uh, there can be some keywords with with with, with some uh, sort of some brand names mixed in, although. Google's getting a little bit hot on that now, and it's starting to disapprove some of those for the for the, for the bigger for the bigger providers. Okay, so why do they want health insurance? What are they What are they concerned about? You know, insurance is is always a, a sort of tricky thing because it's a type of prevention. Uh, yes. So what's going What's going through folks' minds when they say, "Well, you know, I could stick with the the the, the lower tier that everyone gets." Um, yes. But what makes what makes them want it to get something different? What what are the what are the emotional and logical um, conversations they're having in their own head? I, I think that I mean sort of looking from from some of the stats uh, from the site when when we ran uh, we ran campaigns that uh, certainly there, there's a, a well represented group from the from kind of the 50 and over group who of course are. Uh, are worried about you know obviously as you get older uh, people are worried that you know what's going to happen to me if I get ill and I don't want to be a burden on my family and so on and so forth and they want they just want kind of peace of mind so there's that constituency there uh, there's kind of younger people that you know that, that think well if something happens to me I, I I want to you know I want to be treated quickly I don't want to be on a waiting list it it, it it's um it's an upsell mentality I guess. Uh -huh. For, for, okay, yeah. so is that is that, is that, is that, is that the main thing? Is that the main uh, thing on their mind, or yeah. like when they're here, are they are they here because they're they've told you they're looking to compare, or are you kind of a, is it, yeah, that's just your business model? So you're saying get, the big because your 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 big thing here is compare as opposed yes. to get health insurance. So is is that yes. where they're coming in? Um, I, I I'm kind of. I'm kind of wishing. I'm kind of beginning to think that it isn't. Um, you know, we 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 are, as I've mentioned to you before, we we are getting conversions, and they're not enough. See, and I, I think that the it's a pretty easy thing to test. The site is so if, if you were to focused. say, you know, if if uh, if the big the thing is, is if they're if they're typing in, you know, best uh, price, uh, lowest uh, price health insurance, uh, compare uh, health insurance uh, quotes, uh, then I would start with this. Um, okay. If the issue is. I think I need health insurance. I, I don't want to be a burden. Then you, you know, it's, I think you could figure out the text that you would offer to people at that point. Yeah. Right. So I'd say in this in this yes. case, it, re it really is the, the very very basic issue of what do they what are they expecting when they come here? So you know, all all of us have expectations all that that are running all the time. There's a wonderful book called Stumbling on Happiness by Daniel Gilbert, and he talks about the concept of nest, nexting, that our brains are always nexting, and so we're always we always have a, a this low level expectation of what's about to happen, and that's why we can be surprised by things because we can't be surprised if we don't have an expectation. So if people are typing in you know uh, low cost health insurance. And they get to a page that says, um, you know, find the best low-cost health insurance for you. And the issue, and then you know, because you're still you're still a comparison engine. That's still your value proposition. But instead of saying, say, 42 percent, it might be more about the the best insurance that'll give you the be the peace of mind, and then for the lowest cost. So it could be something just as simple as adding uh, yeah. the idea of peace of mind, or you don't want to be a burden. Yes. Um, now you've got a picture here of three medical professionals, mm -hmm. right? You might want to test a picture of patients, or a medical profession with, with professional with a patient, or let's say that your your target market patient with their grandchildren, right? Uh -huh. Something that would that would provide because there's there's almost there's no emotional. Um, 
juice to this picture, at least in, in my interpretation. I, I kind there's of no, agree. there's I, no story I, I, here. No, and I kind of agree. And I, I, I was actually thinking to myself, uh, uh, the last time I ran the campaign, that the picture looks so, I, I don't know, it almost looks like um, what you would see if you woke up after an operation. <laughs> 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 So yeah, that, you're right. That, that's something that could be tested quite easily. Great. So I, th I think that's it. I think. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, the site is beautifully designed. I really like the the the, the use of colors. You might have a slight more contrast between the text and the background, especially if some of the folks who are searching are older. You might want to make it a little okay. bit easier to see. Okay. Um, as I approach fifty, I get smarter about stuff like that. You know, when I started doing this thing, this stuff in my late 30s, it, that, yeah. that sort of thing never occurred to me. You know, accessibility, but it does now. Um, no, that's very I, valuable. You, yeah. I like the orange button. I like the the green. You know, very very sparse use of color. Um, uh -huh. I think I would just just um, and the other thing to do is, do you have analytics of any sort that are connected to your AdWords account? Uh, not not properly, no. Okay, so get that set up properly. Yeah, if you yeah. don't know anyone who can do it, we've, we've got a guy that, that our agency works with who's very good, very quick, very reasonable. If you uh, okay. email me, I can uh, put you guys in touch. The reason I want you to do that is I want you to be able to look at different keywords and compare um, both uh, conversion and also time on site. Because the, okay. the time on site can tell you right away if there are certain keywords where people come there and they go, oh no, this isn't for me. Yeah. And so if you can get if, if you start seeing that data, it will allow you to to maybe you know to have different pages for those different keywords, or to say, well, certain keywords yeah. simply aren't aren't a good uh, market for me, and I'm going to stop spending money on them. Yeah, and one one of the other things here that's quite instructive, I, I've set the site up at the moment because obviously we do use some other people's names while, while we still can uh, um, in in the um, in in order to get long tail keywords. Uh, the site's been set up with a PHP routine so that if, for example, um, somebody clicks, um, I, I don't know, a Viva or Signa, um, there is a page that, that that is worded towards Signa and shows the Signa logo, uh, and perhaps. We should consider doing something similar around some of these, uh, some of these other motivators. Uh, it, perhaps we can do that as well because the the site itself, I mean, the, you know, is pretty sophisticated in that respect. It will, you know, it will respond to to a query by by serving a different page. Great. Yeah. So I think uh, I think you don't have a ton of work to do, but but uh, okay. but looking at those different motivations, I think can give you. A bump on on some of the keywords. You want to think, you know, if you have a lot of long tail keywords, you still want to think about sort of um, buckets of meaning, keywords okay. that that basically represent the same basic motivation. Okay, thank you, thank you, Howard. Just can I just ask one more thing before before you go to the next person? Sure. Somebody also, somebody also said to me that um, they think the form should be more contrasty. I I don't know what you, you, you thought about that is. Um, yeah, I think I'd like more contrast. All the way through. Okay. Um, one thing you could do on the form um, is have a white background. Okay. Um, so that, that, I'm not really a designer. I would. Yeah. My favorite form at the moment. I don't know if it still if it still looks like that. Let me uh, let me see if I can bring it up. JetBlue is a uh, U.S. airline. Yeah. And they they are my favorite. I mean, I, I hate airlines. <laughs> I hate websites. <laughs> but, <laughs> So this is it's it's not as good as it used to be, but it's still still pretty good. You know, yeah. buy like buy like <laughs> it's pretty clear compared to other. Um, I know if we, if we look at like uh, American Airlines, th theirs was yeah. never as clear as this. Like you know, leading you to the form. You might have you know I don't know. I'm not yeah. a designer, but I'm thinking maybe like an orange border around the form. Yeah, uh, maybe a little more contrast. Uh, well, like, look, I'll Americans, look. Americans. Gotten better. They're oh. copying from JetBlue now. <laughs> it doesn't. But yeah, this. I mean, or or yeah. you know, or have this in orange or or green. Yeah. Um, I you know, a, a des, I think it's well designed. I think there are design tweaks that that could that could give you a significant bump. Um, okay. 
if you're interested, my um, I have a guy at my agency who does uh, website optimization, Garrett, who is really okay. good at this stuff. So if you don't have um, anyone to do it for you, um, send me a note and, and I can get him on the phone. He can uh, let you know whether he thinks he can do an improvement too. So there you go. I, I, I managed, I managed a little that. cell in there. <laughs> Thank you very much, Harry. Thank you. Sure thing. Thanks, Thanks for playing. Good. Bye. Okay. Bye. Okay. Um, and the next one here is, is Seattle short sales available? Uh, See, that is Ross. I saw Ross. So let's see if Ross is uh, auditorily. Ross, you there? Hello, I am here. Hey, wow, your voice sounds better than mine. <laughs> I don't think so. You can take over. <laughs> All right, so uh, you, you're ready to play. I chose this. This You gave me two uh, landing pages. I chose this one because it had the uh, lower conversion rate. Is this the one you want to work on, or would you prefer the other one? Yes, this is the design we're headed towards. I'd like to improve it. Okay, great. So tell us a little bit about your business and your ideal prospect. We help local homeowners uh, who owe more on their mortgage than their house is worth. Uh, they're wanting to sell. They're wanting to make sure that the lender doesn't come after them uh, for the money. And uh, we, we basically take them through the entire process. We're, we are a law firm and we partner with real estate agents to list the house. Okay, so so your prospect is someone who is in foreclosure or threatened with foreclosure? Uh, either way. They, either they, they just owe more money and they don't want to be in upside down and they uh -huh. think financially it doesn't make sense, uh, all the way to people who are facing a foreclosure action and are just needing some immediate help. Okay. And so, so none, of these peop uh, um, none of these people are particularly happy right now. Right. Is that accurate? Mm -hmm. Okay, so the, fir the first thing is I think there's a big disconnect with the happy, smiling, handsome guy. Okay. Um, okay, so you know what? I have to, I have to put in this. Uh, apparently, people are still not seeing the, the – let me just type in the URL for folks. Uh, can I copy and paste? Yes. Okay, if you can't see it, again, apologies. I just chatted the uh, the URL. Uh, okay, so what? Uh, how do people get to this page? Why are they here? Well, uh, you know, as our headline says, uh, it, it's about uh, learning and education. They're, they are just simply Googling to find out some more information to figure out who they can trust and uh, what, what they need to do next. Okay, so you're you're going after um, informational keywords as opposed to um, you know stop my foreclosure now or you know foreclosure we've tried, attorney. We've tried them all. The highest converting are the one the ones that will actually give us their contact information or the ones who want more information. So we've started to gear it towards that. Okay, great. So what are the keywords that you use that that uh, are information seekers? Uh, foreclosure process, short sale, short sale process. Okay, great. Are those cheaper than the than the more uh, um, commercially, you know, instant keywords? Well, the one like a stop foreclosure would be the most expensive, and you uh -huh. would get national bidders. Uh, once you're, we're focused more on education and short sales. Uh, it's mainly local bidders. When you say national bidders, you, uh, I, su I assume you're you're advertising just in the Seattle area. Yeah, yeah, currently. The the national bidders are more of a lead generation service for, uh, uh, let's say, loan modification style services. Okay. Yeah, so if, you're, if, you want, if you type in stop foreclosure, people will say you can stop foreclosure with a bankruptcy, with a loan modification, and, and bankruptcy attorneys are willing to pay like $16, $20 for a lead. Okay, great. <clears throat> so here's what I see when I... Um, when, when I look at this, there's, there's, uh, there's some conflict in, in what you're offering. So the, the most, the, you know, are, where do our eyes go on the, on the page uh, the, initially? The smiling guy's eyes? To what? The smiling guy's eyes. Yeah. And then, so then it goes to the quote. Um, 
And so what the quote is saying is, you guys do, you know, you, you did a short sale for me. Mm -hmm. Where, which, is, which is different from what people really want here. What you're saying is they want education. Got it. Um, so I think that, that whole part of, you know, this, this is a great, you know, quote for when you're, um, when you're clearly offering a service. But if we're talking, so he's saying learn how it works for free, um, speak with our attorney today, and then the, 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 the button for the call to action is request help now. And to me, help is different from information. So it's kind of, it's kind of a, you, know, you haven't decided whether you're offering a service or free information. Um, what happens when they fill out the form? You, you have someone call them back? Our attorney calls them back. Okay. Um, that, another thing that struck me as a little bit weird is the phrase, speak with our attorney today. Um, it, se it seems very, if there's only one, it seems like they should have a name. <laughs> I don't know. I would, I would love for other people. I'm, I'm sort of, I'm not, a lot of people have posted sort of issues and questions, and I'm, I'm doing this all by myself, so I can't sit and type, because then I would, you know, not be paying attention to, uh, to you. But if, uh, if folks have stuff to add, I can look at it. So I'm, I'm curious whether people are agreeing or disagreeing or have other ideas or, or, or suggestions. So when people fill that out, you, you, have, you have the attorney call them or email them to set up an appointment to talk. Correct. Um, so see, it seems like you might want to do an intermediate step that would be safer for people because if they, you know if the attorney is going to call them, that might be a little bit scary. You might test something where you really do you know you do provide information. Um, you know, a typical a PDF, the seven biggest questions or the seven biggest mistakes or how to get started or how to how to end a foreclose how to end a short sale how to how to avoid a foreclosure with a short, short sale that keeps you above water, mm -hmm. um, as opposed to immediately d doing a, uh, you know, we're going to we're going to talk, we're going to have a consultation. Right. That apparently um, is going to try to make them do a short sale, and you know. Yeah, yeah. So I think I, th I know. Um, and it would be a fair. I think it'd be a fairly easy thing to do to just sort of swap out, instead of you know request help now, get more information, and and to try to work up, um, you know, do you have any canned information that you could test, or would that be sort of a process to create a PDF mm -hmm. or videos or stuff yeah, like that? We definitely have that. I'm I'm actually in the process of working up a, a version of this with a free report right now. Beautiful. So I told you what you already know. Right, well, so in terms of the photo, uh, the, the, it seems if like you go to other sites where people for bankruptcy and other things, yeah, the, the photo of someone who's distressed never seems to be, I mean, maybe from just my bias, I don't like looking at distressed people in a photo. Yeah. Um, do people look at that and say, oh, that's, I, I can relate, and therefore I'd want to relate with this company? Um. Well, you know, I, I don't. I never know what's going to work. Um, what I what I like to think of around pictures on the website is it's like someone's walking into a party that they don't know anybody. Like maybe you know, maybe they met the host and they invited them and they don't know them that well, and they're sort of peering in the door to see is this my kind of people. Okay. Um, so it doesn't have to be like you know they don't have to look in and see the the sixth circle of hell. Mm -hmm. But they do want to see that this is this is a place where I can be safe, where pe it's, it's you know people like me. So some some websites, um, it, you know, it's sort of like a party atmosphere, like this one here that we're probably going to have to get to. You know, make the family cookbook. People who come there, they, they you know, that's a very beautiful aspirational. Oh, we're all going to do our cookbooks together. Like that's that's kind of let's have a party here. Look at all these sample cookbooks. These are people just like me having having cookbooks. Here's here's the person who created the program. You know, it's it's going to be sort of very very social. Uh, yours is much more like come in, sit down, close the door. Let's take care of you. 
So I would say instead, I wouldn't necessarily immediately go with someone in distress pulling their hair out, although I've seen that to be effective, but maybe just someone, someone looking very, like a, a, a consultation with someone looking very concerned and caring. Okay. All right, so, uh, you know, I'm trying to imagine a, a sort of a, 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 an emotional basis for, you know, what's the emotional state of the person who's coming to you? Uh, are they feeling like a failure? Are they, are, they, are they feeling, you know, terrified like there's no ground under their feet? Mm -hmm. uh, do they feel like they just made a mistake and they need to get it fixed? Mm -hmm. You know, what's, when, 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 you, when you guys, when you talk with people, uh, what's, what's sort of, uh, you know, an emotional state that they're in that's, that's fairly common? Well, the, the, they're only receptive to even having a conversation probably occasionally. The rest of the time they're trying to not even go there. And so when they do get there, uh, it can be definitely emotional. And uh -huh. at the same time, they feel like their stories that they've been kind of burned in the past and they, who to trust now is a big issue. It's, it's rather like, hey, I, people I've trusted in the past have burned me. How about I just do nothing? So we're kind of fighting that uh, do nothing aspect as well. Okay, well, there's a headline for you. You've been burned in the past. You know you need to do something, but you don't know who to trust. The worst thing, you know, so the most logical thing to do is do nothing. It's also the worst thing. So that could be a message, right? So... So what you're trying to do, this is like, um, you know, the, the, the kitten, the scared kitten in the tree, right? They know they need to come down, and, but every time you try to get them down, they get freaked and go higher up the tree. Mm -hmm. uh, so look, you know, look, look at ways in which this website is sort of like, hey, <laughs> you know, that, that's almost scaring them more. There's, there's, there's ways in which you could do a design that would be much more, I, I would say you want your website, my gut is you'd want it to be much more feminine. Okay. Which is to say the first, the first thing people want to, be do, want to do here is to be understood mm. and held safely mm -hmm. and embraced. This is, this, is, this is for them a very vulnerable time. Mm -hmm. And, you know, as you said, they can't, they don't even want to talk about it. So if the first thing you're saying is, well, talk about it, we got to talk about it, yeah, as yeah. opposed to, um, you know, I would, is, is your attorney a, uh, a sort of compassionate looking and sounding person? That is one of actually our, our issues right now on conversion from uh, lead to client. Um, I'm oh. working with them on, on that. But, okay, so you may you may want someone in the middle, so yeah. you can still if, if it's you know if, if it's is it a he the attorney? Correct. We I have actually three attorneys. One's a female, and I might need to move her into the first role of engaging with the client. Yeah, or, or even someone else to say you know our attorneys, um, we don't want you to talk to them first because they we they they were brought up to play hardball, mm -hmm. and they're exactly the sort of person you want on your team. But they're the sort of person who, when you're hurting, they, uh, they just want the facts. So, um, we, you know, <laughs> we're going to talk to you a different way first. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we'll introduce you to our attorney when it's time. But right now, let's, let's find out what's going on and how we can help you. Um, you know, you, you sound like you have a, a compassionate voice. Um, first thing I said to you is your voice sounds better than mine. And I don't, you know. I don't know why I said it, but I did not mean it, that your, your voice is sort of, you know, it's resonant, it's, uh, it's, it's low enough, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's not fast pitched or, or tense, it didn't make me feel anxious in any way. You know, a video with you saying, look, here's, your situ here's, your, here's the situation of most of the people who come to us. They're on the, you're on this page, and you know you need help. And you're even, you're even frightened to reach out because what if we're another, you know, sleaze bag? Mm -hmm. You know, you're in this problem because people made promises to you. 
And yes, you know, I believe in personal responsibility, but the truth is we've had a crazy time in the last several years and all sorts of people were making all sorts of irresponsible claims, offering all sorts of irresponsible mortgages, and you got caught up in the frenzy. And you're left holding the bag. The banks are doing fine. They all got bailed out. All right, the people who sold you this stuff are either selling it to, to new people or they've moved on. You're the one left holding the bag. And I understand that it's hard to know who to trust. So let me tell you a little bit about us, and let me tell you the first steps that you would take in order to engage. Mm. All right, and maybe even give people um, some criteria to figure out, well, you know, why should you trust us? We're, we're here to make money too. We have a business. We make money when you use us. But let's, let, let's take a look at how our business is set up so that our interests are aligned. Because mm -hmm. that was the big problem, is that your interest as a home buyer and the guy who sold you the house and the guy who sold you the mortgage and the person who, uh, who put together the deal, the interests weren't aligned long term. Mm -hmm. And that's how everything fell apart. It wasn't that these people were, were bad or evil. It was, it was a, a poorly constructed system. So in, you know, we, we've come into the wreckage, and we wanted to make sure that would never happen to, to, to anyone we worked with. So here's how we set up our business. Mm -hmm. All right, so I, I assume there's a lot of win-win. Yeah, absolutely, 100%. Yeah. yeah. So, so you know, the basic thing is if, if they don't trust you and they're hurting, you've got to create a site that, is, uh, that, that holds them first and makes, that allows them to sit and relax. That's excellent. All right. So I hope this was helpful, and I hope it, it, I didn't talk in a lot of specifics, but it sounds like you uh, you have a sense of where to take this. Thank you so much. That was that was awesome. Awesome. Well, thanks a lot. Thanks for playing. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye. All right. So let's see. Um, all right. Well, uh, let's. I'm going to start taking things in the order in which they were. Put here, so I have uh, nanceinsurance.com. So I haven't looked at these before, so uh, I'm hoping that they will be useful. I, I'm, I'm gonna, I may call an audible if uh, if I think that uh, a particular site isn't going to be uh, valuable for everyone to look at. Uh, integrity, confidentiality, and service. So let me see if I can find Darren and. Here you are. Hello, Darren. Can we hear you? Yes. How are you? I'm very well. How about you? Good, sir. Thank you. Okay. So, solutions and resources for risk management. I already don't know what that means. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's probably my problem. <laughs> tell, tell us about uh, Nance Insurance and the insurance butler. Uh, typically, I'm looking for a doctor, attorney, or a professional of some type that's looking for a more broader package of someone to help them on all their stuff. That is that is a typical client that I'm looking for with this website. Okay, so your value proposition to them is sort of higher end Correct. people and you're doing a the full service. Correct. Okay, and how are people finding your site? It is local, so I'm in, uh, uh, this is for my county that I'm in, the city I'm in is Gainesville, Florida, and uh, I don't, you know, Howie, I don't know the answer to that, because I don't, if I have analytics, analytics I haven't looked at it. Okay. If you will. So, I don't know how they're finding the site. Okay. Uh, how many people are finding it, just out of curiosity? Well, how I many people are coming to, to the site? Sorry, say again? I don't know the answer to that question. I should know. I know that in speaking to a person who was helping me with my SEO, they said I was getting a good number of hits for you know where where it was positioned on the uh, Google. Okay, so I, I would say the main the main thing here is it won't cost you a lot of money, and you won't do it. Someone else will do it to get yeah. some data, set up a system because we don't know we don't know what they're I mean, you probably have that data somewhere already. I do. Um, 
I would guess almost every website has a stats log that is just automatically working in the background whether you ever stumble upon it or not. Correct. So you might ask your, if you have someone helping you with SEO, to send you a report of what are the top 10 keywords. Okay. And, w and what pages they go to. Because my guess is that not many of them will go to your home page. They may go to a specific, you know, people aren't typing in insurance butler or solutions for risk management. People are typing in, you know, auto insurance. Uh, you may be getting a lot of people who are not your prospects. Because, um, you know, if, if you rank high for auto insurance, you might be getting everybody. Okay. Uh, so the, the other thing is, so I, I can see in way, ways in which this site is designed to be a little bit upscale. So, you know, the, the gray background has that sort of, you know, zero Halliburton or, you know, um, <laughs> gunmetal gray sort of understated business sense to it. Um, and the idea of the insurance butler is very evocative, especially, you know, bowing with, with uh, hands outstretched and tails saying, you know, at, at your service. Um, from this from this page, though, when I look at it, and I told you, I said the first thing I know is I don't understand what you do. Um, okay. So your big quote here, integrity, confidentiality, service, that, that could apply to almost any business. Okay. You know, uh, I don't want to be crass, but the idea of confidentiality, <laughs> You know, brings up lots of uh, sort of businesses where discretion is is, is valued. <laughs> well, you know, some of these some of this came from my own client base. I asked them, uh, you know, what what is it that you that you want that you're not getting, and they they always tell me, well, I always feel that uh, the people in the office I go to aren't uh, information is not that confidential. Okay, so then um, when but when you say these words by themselves, though, it's it's just sort of wallpaper. Okay. Because if, you know, the thing is, is if, if everyone can say it, then it doesn't mean anything. And <clears throat> there's no website in the world that would put, which would say, we lack integrity, we spread your information everywhere, and you'll be lucky to ever get us on the phone. Okay. <laughs> right? So, <laughs> so when you, when people see that, they, you know, anyone can say that, whether it's true or not. So it's, so it, it, it's, it's no kind of sort of proof. So what I would I would say is if you you know Glenn Livingston one of my friends and mentors his definition of hype is you know praise without proof. Okay. So if you say you know if you have quotes from people saying um, I, I'm so glad I finally found you we worked with other insurance companies and here was our experience. So you're immediately sort of doing a comparison because you're you're saying you know you're offering what could be sort of a commodity product. The end product is you know some insurance quote, okay. some policy that they could get from a dozen other people. Um, you 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 so you have a differential in that you package things and maybe you can give them some breaks and maybe you can make it easier for them. They only have one phone call, right? I have two different insurance companies for health and auto. And the crazy thing is, they're brothers. <laughs> so they have the, the insurance companies have the same last name, you know. And I, can, and I can never remember. I'm always calling the wrong brother, and they're like, you know, they're certainly used to it by now. But it sure would be easier if one of them would just take over the whole thing. Well, I can definitely take that uh, that little tagline out of there. It's uh, it's easy to change. So easy. Right. Well, I'm, I'm, I want to think. I want you to think about what. You know, what could go there? Um, you know, it might be something like, so if it's a concierge, there's the idea there's a little bit of privacy here. Um, you know, so click here to go inside and see our stories. Or, or more specifically, you, if you want to attract doctors and lawyers and upscale professionals, you want to say, you know, c concierge insurance services, you know, high-touch insurance services for, uh, for high net worth professionals. Okay. So you're immediately saying, here's what sets me apart. Right? Okay. And then you can say, well, why, why would a high net worth professional use us? Well, you know, integrity, how does that, how does that play out? What does integrity mean and where, where would you find examples of non-integrity? Let me tell okay. you a story. So I don't know if you, you know about um, you know, Nordstrom's 
yes. department store. So their no, their 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 is their thing is customer service, and there are stories about their customer service that become, um, you know, m metaphors that you don't have to say. All you have to say is you know tires. And there's a, there's a fairly famous story about people returning their tires to Nordstrom and getting a refund, and Nordstrom doesn't <laughs> sell tires. So that story becomes you know, the proof and the shorthand for a concept of service. Okay. So I would say look for a signature story about service, a signature story about confidentiality, or if you don't have one, then a signature story about how others really don't value confidentiality. I do um, have that, actually. I do have those stories that I could pop in there. Yeah, so I think about, um, first of all, I, you know, I, I would put the, the links above the insurance butler, put the links at the top. There's a lot of space here that isn't being used to tell your story. Yeah, you know, I've, I've been building the website for a couple of weeks. So I still have some changes to make, and so it's kind of, I, I do have some more space I can use around and beside and below. So, yes. Right. Also, the, I, I haven't even looked at these these rotating pictures. Um, Pat recommends getting rid of the the flash. And you know, if you're the insurance butler, she says, add a photo. He or she, I don't know what that is yet. Um, okay. Add a photo or video of of you or who they'll who will be serving them. So these look like okay. stock photos. They are. So if you're saying so, stock photos and individual concierge service are kind of at odds with each other. All right. right. So stock photo is, well, I, you know, I got this for 30 bucks. That's what mass market websites use. Okay. You know, so, so, you know, a picture of your office, of your team, of you, a video, right? You also, you have also have a voice that I would say um, is sort of elegant and caring. All right. Thank you. So you're welcome. So if you, you know, there's no hard edges to it. It's kind of, it's kind of a, uh, you know, a velvety sort of voice. So if you're, if you're there saying, look, here's, here's our agency. Here's who we serve. Um, you know, we've heard, we've heard lots of stories. We've asked, we ask our clients why they stay with us because we're not the cheapest. I, I assume that's true. Uh, that would be true. So, so you can say that right out. We're not the cheapest. Um, but you know, you probably don't buy the cheapest car. That's right. You probably don't drink the cheapest soda in the supermarket. Um, but we think of health insurance as a com you know, insurance as a commodity. So a lot of people think they're smart by choosing the cheapest. Well, here's what you give up if you go for the the, the cheapest health insurance, and then you list some of the things that people are going to get from you. Okay. So, so I would I would say make this message based around what your what these people want and you know what they want because you talk to your clients and they tell you and so instead of just doing a quick shorthand integrity confidentiality service play out those stories and make them feel by the end of this at the end of their time on this website that they'd have to be crazy to go to anyone else okay because you have set up your business to work just with them all right that's a lot of good information I appreciate it. All right. It. Well, thanks Thanks for playing, and thanks for on, on such, such short notice. <laughs> All right. All right. Take care. See you later, Alan. Bye, Darren. Okay. So Pat is here, and Pat is doing Make the Family Cookbook. So let's, uh, let's get Pat in. Hello, Pat. Pat, can we hear you? Oh, I was looking forward to the cookbook thing. Oh, well. Uh, let's take a look at the next one here. Uh, okay. Kaakiitela.com, and that would be Lisa. Let's see if Lisa's audio is working. Lisa. Hi. Hi. How are you? Good, Howie. How are you? Good. Kier, how do you how do you pronounce it? First of all. Um, <laughs> Kitella. Kitella. Okay. It reminds me of uh, 
hazelnut chocolate spread. Right, I've heard that before, Nutella, yeah. Yeah, now i got to go eat something. Y'all you, have to wait for now for a while. Okay, see you later. <laughs> okay, so um, very elegant website. Um, yes. Looks. Kitella means to thank, applaud, praise, custom fabric, custom awards. Okay. Yes. So tell me a little bit about your business and your ideal prospect. I am I am one person doing everything. I work with a client to design a custom award or gift or donor wall. Um, then I fabricate it and deliver. So it's one person. They work with just me from start to finish. Um, so the, the key clients that I've had so far are um, it's pretty much all been local. I live in southwestern Colorado, Telluride area. So it's the museum, the med center, all the nonprofit organizations, um, different athletic events, the local World Cup competition on the ski area. And I am so fortunate to get these really cool projects where people do not want an engraved plexiglass plaque. They want something made by an artist and um, they get something fully custom. Sweet. Do you have um, aspirations of moving beyond the Telluride area? In completely. <laughs> okay. <laughs> completely. Yeah. Today Telluride, tomorrow Carbondale. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, I'm, I'm working on it. Okay, so I'm curious, folks who are who who looking at this website before we got into the discussion, um, how many of you say yes if you kind of took a quick look and knew what the website was about, and no if you looked at it and really didn't get what it was about. Uh, not too many coming in. A couple of no's. No idea. Not initially. No. <laughs> no. Oh, we got one yes. Oh, good. Thank you. Um, now that might not be a problem, depending on how people get to your site. So are they are they doing a search for something? How do people get there? Well, um, I've done. I haven't done any AdWords yet for this site. Um, I guess I stopped short because when I think of what what I want to say, if I want to say custom awards. Anyone who engraves plexiglass has custom awards. Um, yeah. So I, I haven't figured that out yet. So um, it's it's mostly, again, mostly local. I've had a few randoms that they said they were searching for artistic donor walls, and they found me. But it's you know you can count mm -hmm. them on one hand. Right. All right. Well, we got some some useful uh, in feedback here. Marty says it looks like you sell clocks. Well, that's the other thing. I, I really like doing Clark's clocks, so I do everything I mentioned plus art clocks. Okay. So you might want a separate site for art clocks mm -hmm. um, or, you know, figure, you know, use the, talk about the art clocks as, as they can be uh, awards and they can also just be regular clocks. Um, okay. So Nicholas has a piece of advice that I like. So next in the name, a small blurb what you do. So okay. the art of distinction is another one of those phrases that means absolutely everything and nothing. Okay. So instead, you know, um, cut, you know, um, awards, awards, plaques, gifts, created created by a local artist, created by an artist, not okay. not a uh, I don't know, like a what what a plexiglass things made on us, some sort of stamping machine. Sure, laser cutters. Made by, made by an artist, not a not an industrial laser cutter, mm -hmm. you know, or you know, uh, something you know, as opposed to cookie cutter awards, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. oh, cust you know, artistically, you know, cre or, uh, there's words here that I don't know what they are. Um, maybe Inspired. maybe you know, so Michelle says artist created. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing is that yeah. Um, Philip notices um, that the the actual three lines that say what you do uh -huh. are tiny. Uh -huh. They're kind of in bold and they're kind of in italics. Okay. So basically, bold and italics are meant for single words to okay. make them stand out. If the whole thing is bold and italic, 
that's kind of like defeating the purpose. Okay. So I would say find a nice font. Um, the font you have at the top is gorgeous. The awards, recognition, gifts, and plaques. That looks like a, a sort of a clean Helvetica light. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Right? It's the same font, I think, for uh, the art of distinction, more or less. Use that font. Just have it without, uh, you know, all caps. Okay. You know, this, in fact, the same font that you have for the um, copyright notice in the bottom right. You can just use that one. Okay. But make, make it a little bigger. Okay. Um, I would say don't start with the, the finished name. Okay. Um, you, might, you might have, like, under Kitella at the top, you can move that up a little bit. You've got some space in the red. And then mm -hmm. you can, underneath it, you can just say, you know, finish for thanks. Mm -hmm. Which 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 would then you know tell tell that much. Uh, all right, Larry says keep it simple, one of a kind recognition awards and plaques. Mm -hmm. um, all right, custom awards. You imagine it, we bring it to life, or we bring your vision to life. So I don't. Nicholas is is suggesting that it's sort of their vision. I don't know if you know how much input they give you or whether. You know, you're, they're basically commissioning, like the same way someone would commission a logo. Uh, they just tell you about it, like this, uh, the Stephen Wald Award with the with the people sort of dancing yeah. on. Yep, that's that's the logo of the organization that gave him the award. Okay, so uh, yeah, I think, and I, and I would have, uh, you know, if, if if it's all you. So the first thing you said, you said when I asked you about to tell me about the co the business and the company and your prospects is it's all me. Yeah. So it's all you, and there's nothing here about you. So mm -hmm. I don't know if I go to about if I'll see a picture of you. Mm-hmm. There you go. Um, metal fabrication and design. So this this is good. Um, what's your what's the your biggest bragging point? Ooh. You're in. You're in. You're. You're. You're in. Your jewelry is in the Whitney, and the um, uh, ICP in New York, and galleries in LA and San Francisco. Yeah, that was once was. So now things are different. So biggest bragging point, I guess. Um, I guess that I've done the awards for um, for the North Face and for the World Cup in Telluride. Um, Wait, the North Face? Yeah, North Face. Uh, oh, okay. Your design clients include the North Face. Okay, so I don't know that much about Colorado, but I believe the North Face is big deal there. Yeah, and they're not even in Colorado. That's my one. That's my one really big deal, and they found me probably through the Telluride Mountain Film connection. Okay, so somewhere here you have, you know, a client list, mm -hmm. or you know, you can have clients and then. Um, Galleries where art has been featured, mm -hmm. right? So they may not be the Whitney may not be having it now, but they had it once, mm -hmm. right? The only way I would get my jewelry in the Whitney is if I took it to the store and left it there, uh -huh. <laughs> right? So this is that's kind of a big deal, uh -huh. and I think you are the big deal here. You're you're the artist, mm -hmm. and I would, uh, you know, the, the 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 flash where it keeps on changing is is okay, um, mm -hmm. but I think I would have it more static and just say here here are some of the awards and then have a little thing underneath it. So each one needs a a one sentence caption, mm -hmm. uh, so that people can see. Okay, you've done you've done big stuff. You're a des you know you've done design for the North Face. What what would I uh, see of yours if I went to a uh, an, an REI? Or the North Face um, website. What would I? What would? What have you done for them? Well, I wouldn't be on their website. You can see um, when it flashes to the the one on the right that uh, has the green felt. Yeah. It's, I've just done awards. They give awards to um, about five retailers each year. Okay, I see. So you've done awards for them. Yes. Okay. Well, I would say list. You know, list of clients. The North Face. Does that? Mm -hmm. Is anybody else as impressed by that? Um, Marty is emphatic that he wants you to lose the flash. It's very distracting. Really? Okay. So less uh, is more? 
I don't, you know, I don't think it's necessary. I think you have enough space there. Um, so if, if, if we stop here, if you see the Telluride, the smaller ones, mm -hmm. those go on top. Mm -hmm. And then it says, you know, this is, I didn't, I didn't know this was the North Face. I've seen it how many times in the past 10 minutes, right? Mm -hmm. 30 times it's, it's circled around. But mm -hmm. I haven't, I didn't see it was North Face. So you want to mm -hmm. call, your, call our attention to that. Mm -hmm. Really go, you know, go with your, your, your biggest bragging rights and your strongest suit, which I mm -hmm. think is your pedigree as an artist and the people you've worked with. Mm -hmm. Um and the you know these these are these are gorgeous um, pieces of art that you're you're showing here. Um, I'm not sure what that middle is that that like a it looks like a sideways doorknob. Yeah, it's a cabinet knob. Cabinet knob. So so when I see it sort of standing straight up, like looking like sort of a piston, <laughs> I don't know I don't exactly know what it is. Okay. Good good feedback. Oh, oh we got a lot more so. Um, not less, just no motion. No motion. Takes your attention off any one thing. Philip wants a picture of the artist on the home page. Mm -hmm. you, yeah, Philip, and Philip, there's lots of Philips here today. So, um, uh, user controlled slider instead of the flash. Ooh, I like that. Okay. Do you know what that is? Yes. Okay. Um, Pat says, North Face would definitely impress, and a photo of you. And yes, a gallery with descriptions. Okay. Says Marty. So I think, yes, let me take a look at the, uh, and you have, you have testimonials. Mm -hmm. uh, let's take a look at those quickly. Uh, all right, so this is a hard page to look at compared to the, the cleanliness of the home page. So again, everything here is italic or bold. Mm-hmm. Don't don't do that. Okay. Um, the way I like to do testimonials is to give them a headline, so I know what I'm reading. Okay. Uh, and the headline can either be, you know, Telluride Ski and Golf, um, you know, VP colon quote gorgeous pieces of art. Okay. Uh, all right. So let's see what you got. Okay. Sheep Mountain Alliance. Uh, um, I think I, if you could, I would rather see more, uh, more uh, prominently displayed photos of the people giving the testimonials, mm -hmm. and then and then uh, the pictures of the the product themselves. So their photographs. Yeah, then people want to see people. Okay. I think. I mean, you know, every, everything here is, uh, is is test worthy. I I don't actually know anything about anything. I I just you know. <laughs> I have intuitions, and sometimes they're right, but I like, you know, that's why I have uh, Garrett, who, who runs tests, and then kindly tells me when I'm right. <laughs> um, and press. Let's see what you got there. The Telluride watch. So I'm not sure what this is. This is the Telluride watch is a newspaper? Yes. Okay, and so this is an article from the Telluride Watch, and yes. then here's jewelry by Lisa Telluride Magazine. All right, so here you can you can also just take this and on your home page have a little thing on the right as featured in mm -hmm. Telluride Watch, um, eighty-seven fifty magazine, Telluride Magazine, Shelter, twenty ten. Mm -hmm. Just, just to uh, there's a lot of stuff here. You're you're kind of a big deal. A little deal. <laughs> well, you know what? The people who are going to hire you, you're a big deal I mean, to yeah, them. You're a big deal. And you know, it's not you bragging about yourself. It's you know, you don't have to be beating your chest. You have to say, mm -hmm. you know, here's my client list. Mm -hmm. Um. You know, and the more casually you say it, the better it is. Mm -hmm. Like a couple of years ago, I went to do some consulting at Google, and mm -hmm. you better believe I sort of mentioned that by, in a by the way fashion for about six months. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, when I was when I was down at the at, at Mountain View, you know, talking with some of the Google folks. You know, I, what I really meant was I went to Google. They mm -hmm. hired me. 
Mm -hmm. My my social okay. security number is in their file system. <laughs> I'm so happy. <laughs> You, mm -hmm. you should be impressed, but you know, I'm way too cool for that. So, you know, just uh, let let your uh, let the things that would impress other people, because because they're they're real. Mm -hmm. Just kind of let 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 those work for you. You've already done you've already done a lot of work, and let it let it speak for you now. And you're doing it beautifully with with these gorgeous images on the website, but they're not entirely clear what they are or what the significance is. Okay. All right, any questions? Oh, that's great. Thank you, everybody. Yes, thank you, everybody, for, yeah, I, uh, I'm looking at this uh, long list of comments that people people made. And Pat says her cookbook site is working. So we're gonna, I think we're gonna finish off with that one. Lisa, thanks a lot. I'll catch you, you later. Know. Take care. And here is Pat testing. One, two, three, Pat. Well, I'm here. How are awesome. you? Awesome. I'm hey, great. I apologize. Technical difficulties here. Yeah, I, I've never had any of those. <laughs> yeah, I know. Just me. I got you. <laughs> hey, I, I love the uh, Dummies book. It, it completely saved me and kept me going with AdWords. Um, awesome. If it hadn't been for your book, I would have given up. I burned three hundred dollars in a couple of days, two, two dollars, two twenty-five a click, and uh, it was a joke. And then I read your book and went back to it, and now I'm doing really well. I'm down to thirty cents and under a click, and my advertising budget is one fifty to two hundred a month, and I'm grossing anywhere from eight to twelve hundred a month. So it's it's going up, up, up. It's great. Awesome. I'm, I'm going to make a mark to find this point in the recording and uh, <laughs> ask you for permission to, um, to broadcast it widely. Yeah, no problem. You can use it for commercial use. Absolutely. Awesome. All right. I'll, I'll also plant the seed that uh, an Amazon review with, with, with that in it would be awesome, too. <laughs> but, but this is really about you, not me. So right. tell us about uh, your, your business. Uh, this is – oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, no, go ahead. Uh, this is a program that lets people type their own recipes in and then make their own cookbook in a PDF. Um, and I, I came up with the idea with my son, uh, who was a senior in high school last year and had a very busy summer and didn't have time to get a job because of his water polo schedule and speech and debate and other extracurriculars. So he's very good at computers. So with his computer skills and... Uh, my need for a cookbook, custom cookbook program that was easy to use, we teamed up in a kind of a joint venture and uh, threw together the site. It, it's changed dramatically. I, I wish I had saved some of the old uh, screenshots because uh, before your book, it didn't look anything like this. Uh, All right, let's take a, a look. Of, a lot of tips. Uh, for folks who don't know this trick, Uh, this is the Wayback Machine. Let's see if they if they oh, okay. caught if they caught any of yours your old okay. ones. Uh, well, it looks like the oldest one is May 10th. Oh yeah, it goes back to 2011. Okay, well uh, we don't get the whole thing, but we can see a little bit of. Uh, it won't it won't have saved the pictures, but was this kind of what it looked like? Uh, no, this this seems to be missing the um, style sheet. From Dreamweaver, this this looks like just the images in the text file. Okay. Doesn't look like it's it correctly. It hasn't really changed that much um, since then. The the big change because we went online last year, in I think um, July or October of 2011, um, and the big changes came in probably. Uh, February or March of 2012. I'm trying to think when I read your book, but I think it was about then. And okay. I, I kind well, of got it that I needed to talk to people. Great. So I think there's two things I th I'm thinking about here. Um, sure. One is I think there's ways in which you could have a, a, a cleaner, better design. Good. Um, but I don't. F I don't feel like I have a lot to say about that at the moment. Um, maybe okay. if, if folks could, you know. The good folks who had so many helpful pieces of advice for Lisa can mention things. I, I feel like there's stuff to be done here. 
Um, okay. So, but so you mean I'd rather I'd rather focus on the message and think about okay. who the people are okay. who are coming to you. So that, you know, what really catches my eye on this is actually the words. My wife Betty passed away last year. Right. So so there that's where you hit me with emotion. Okay. So tell me tell me about the people who want and anyway, how do they find you? What keywords are are doing well? And well, let's just start um, there. What what are the keywords that are bringing people to the site? Oh, I have a lot of keywords. Uh, I've got uh, create a cookbook, cookbook software, um, make a cookbook, family cookbook, uh, cookbook maker. I, I've got a bunch of different keywords that bring people. In the beginning, software was the cookbook software was the one that converted the most. But then once I fine fine tuned the website, I get conversions all over the place, um, even from big words that are very vague like make a make a cookbook because initially those those are people who have pretty much just entered the sales funnel and they're kind of looking around and in the beginning before I redid the website it was a very low conversion but now I'm converging converting uh, much better on those so uh, to answer your question it's a number of different keywords that all pertain to that um, desire to make or create a cookbook got it Okay, so um, can I ask what's your conversion rate right now? You know, most of my stuff is coming from uh, SEO because I have 60 some keywords that rank in the top 20. And okay. as to as to the conversions and Google, I have Google and I have Bing. And Google for every, they'll give me about equal number of organic keywords as they're giving me um, as they give me the paid ones. And so the actual conversion rate is probably around 10 to 15 percent. That's awesome. Yeah, it's, it's gone way up and I'm down to, it, it's like five to seven dollars a day. Wow. Uh, well, in that case, <laughs> I don't want to touch it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, there's, there's always room for I think I think you want more traffic. Yeah, more traffic is the biggest thing because what I have you done? Website. What have you done on Facebook? Uh, you know, I have a web page on Facebook, and I really haven't done much. I actually tried some Facebook advertising for every single person who has bought um, the program. I keep track of what city they're from, what state they're from, and I run their email through Facebook to see what their likes are and and just kind of who the profile of the person is. And so I got a few pointers from there that. Only about maybe 30 or 40 percent of the emails, email addresses actually come up on Facebook. So it, it, they aren't all over there. Probably because my average age is is usually over 40, and I I have you know grandmothers in their 80s who've done this, and and mm. so they're less likely to be on Facebook. But I did have a campaign. Initially, I put one up. And it was very indiscriminate. I, I forget what the categories were that I picked, but it was like women over 50 years old, maybe. And I burned through 30 clicks in 30, 50 cent clicks in like an hour. And I thought, okay, this doesn't work. So then I, I started incorporating some of the likes uh, that these people had, the people who had purchased who had Facebook pages, uh, had on their on their pages like. A number of them liked Adele, so I used that as one criteria. And then a number of them liked Mitt Romney, so I used that as a criteria. So I, I had a bunch of different criteria like that, and so I put my campaign back up, and I ran it for about two weeks. I got two clicks. Um, so I kind of abandoned the Facebook uh, advertising, and I haven't really haven't really done much with the Facebook page. Okay, here, here's I'm gonna riff for a little bit because I got a bunch I got okay. a bunch of ideas and they great. they they're either great or they suck. Um, okay. well, but because I, I always can, I can tell they're great or they suck because they're, they're they, I'm excited. Um, okay. So uh, one I, one idea is I, is I would love to see a video of you talking. Um, okay. Actually, the part of the page I like the least is there's something about your photo that feels sort of washed out and not okay. very vibrant. New photo, right? New photo, and, and the photo that kind of tells a story 
maybe is you like holding a cookbook or you with an easy bake oven or oh, with a cake or yeah. or something but this okay. the picture of you is like I don't know I don't you know it's hard to talk, talk about people's photographs it's a very personal thing but it does it doesn't feel like you're you're giving off uh, love and care and engagement in that photo yeah, it's sort of like you're you. there and someone you. took your picture okay a more animated photo and then with something catchy like an easy bake yeah, something that would that would, you know that that gets people's attention, and you know, and I, again, every test everything because I could be wrong. Um, okay. The other thing I was thinking was this is a when you're talking about Facebook, and so okay, so ads are going to be hard for a while, and you know, it, it may take a while to get the right ad. I mean, I I certainly saw in my mind an ad on you know where that you could target people who are looking for recipes or cooking sites about um, you know. Finally, make your finally make a real right. cookbook. Right, uh, right. But that, what I was thinking was yeah. So so didn't work. Too expensive. But what I'm thinking yeah, is well, that that's what it was. Howie, uh, is it time to make your cookbook? And it, exactly, that's exactly how I did it with the Facebook. And I thought I would do a lot better with it. Right. So that, so I'm I'm suggesting we do Facebook more organically. And okay. I think you have a huge opportunity here to create a community. Okay. So you have all these people who've downloaded your software, and presumably many of them have made a cookbook. Right. Get your son to have a way that people could upload their cookbooks to share them with others. Right, like a PHP message board where they can talk to each other and upload, or just. Well, I, I don't know the exact, you know, technology, but think about a place mm -hmm. where people could either could like them, could download other people's cookbooks, where you've you've got here a a, a community of interest. Right. Where, where these people are passionate about it, and it could you could have a, each each of them could have a page where where Charles honors his wife Betty, right. and here's her cookbook, and and people could comment on what's your favorite recipe from this cookbook. Right. So okay. so that, so now you have something you can talk about on Facebook. You can have a a page on Facebook that you're mentioning. You know. Here's this new cookbook. You can anyone can download it. You're giving away free cookbooks. Right, right. Um, Excellent. So that also brought me to the idea of I don't see any secondary um, conversion, like join my email list. No, there's not. So it, it, you know, you could one thing you could do is offer a a limited download. Um, you know, we might have a watermark or only 10 pages or something so people can try it out. If, if one of the big issues is I didn't, I thought it would be too hard and I see you, right. you know, you really focus on fast, easy, quick entry biz for busy people. Um, you know, if your people are, are Charles and they're in their 70s and 80s, they may not be busy. Their big question might be, I don't know that I can do this. I don't want to screw it up. I don't want to feel bad. So, you know, right, a demo, right, give me your name right. and email and I'll send you a right. demo could, could work. You could also have, okay. a, you know, a page of other people's cookbooks where if I, wanna, if I think okay. I might want a cookbook, um, I can see a, one sample cookbook or suppose I could just download all these people's cookbooks, right. everyone who wanted to share it. Right. And no, then that could, that could be the, 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 con the, the stuff on your Facebook page. Um, right. The you other thing you could do, um, and it's great that you have a son who is so talented and wants nothing more than to please his mother, <laughs> is to create something where people can suggest cookbook ideas and you can crowdsource them. So oh, let's say you have, right. I'm, 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 you know, and you can, you can either give these away or sell them for a dollar or everyone mm -hmm. who participates gets, gets a free copy of it. Let's do, let's do a Halloween cookbook. Right. Let's do let's do the Mitt Romney cookbook and the Barack right. Obama cookbook. Let's do a Super Bowl cookbook. So you could now ba base it off of events, um, public figures, celebrities, you know, pretty much anything. Excellent. And what you know, and that's a way to form a community where if people can, you know if people post a recipe to all recipes or recipes are or something like that. It just sort of sits there until someone finds it and then they vote on it and you know if you upload your quiche recipe and it gets one and a half stars you feel bad yeah, that's right. true. here here is something where you're you're not doing the same level of quality control instead you're doing sort of community building 
This is this right. is the online version of, you know, the um, the church cookbook with the with the recipe for the uh, green bean casserole with mushroom soup. Right, right. It's not about haute cuisine. It's about the love of people that come that is expressed through the, their legacy of of food. Exactly. Great, good suggestions. I like them. <laughs> oh, Larry's. <laughs> Larry wants to know if the if the prison number was cropped out of the photo. <laughs> oh. If the prison number? Yeah, I guess the photo's got to change, huh, Larry? <laughs> yeah. Actually, it's not so bad if you click on the read more. You'll see it's me in front of the um, me cooking. Yeah, look, we're, we're, we're oh, this is, that's great. Um, it's it it is a poor quality picture. I'm with you. Yeah, it's it's kind of small and. Yeah, yeah, I gotta do a different one. You don't look that happy. <laughs> yeah, no, no, I agree. It can be improved on. I agree with you. Um, but you know, I mean, we're we're only we're only having fun because uh, you're doing so well. Um, Phil, Philip, Philip number six says <laughs> worth paying a pro to do the pick, and Paul, <laughs> Paul suggests that you have the price on it. Yeah. Uh, on uh, he's saying put it on the home page. Uh, Paul, is that what you're saying? Um, Do you want pricing on the homepage? Yeah. Um, oh, we're waiting to hear. We'll see what he says. Yes. I think so. so that's okay. something you can test. Also, do you have data on what people click? Yes. Um, I have analytics, and then I have where you can, um, I forget what it's called, but there's something that lets you, it, it shows you all the different clicks, where they clicked and how, what percentage. Okay. Even, even if it's a click somewhere where there's nothing to click? Does it show you that? No, I, I think it. I think it has to be a hyperlink. Okay, so I would I would spend a uh, area. I would spend a few bucks to get a month or two of Crazy Egg. Okay. Which is a um, a visual analytics program mm -hmm. um, that will show you. For example, one thing I suspect is that people are clicking on the blue because oh, blue is the link. internet code for clickable link. Right, right. So you may find that people are clicking on these, and then it would, uh, if they are, they're getting frustrated. Um, okay. You could turn them into links. So if someone clicks on busy people, you could have a page about showing how quick it is, have some testimonials where people say, gosh, this was so great, this was so quick. Right, right. Got it. Oh, you've got some best of. Uh, yeah, for 2012. I did do a few of those. It's not a very good page. My son took a crack at it, and design is not really his um, thing. Mm -hmm. Okay, so and the other thing I would do here, so what, what, what's the, what do you want them to do on this page? You want them to click the download? Uh, yeah, the, the goal is to either click download or to get over to sample. Okay, so but some of them are going to watch the demo, and some of them are going to start scrolling down, right? Right. And I would have a button, a button link to the, or a clear link. Also, don't uh, underline because that also says uh, link. link. Right. So I would have a you know, space, and, and right here have a clear link to the order page. Okay. You know, get started. Order now. Bottom. Yeah, below each each uh, each section. Okay. So someone goes all the way down to the bottom. You know, they're down here. They have to wait here. Also, I would rather you have a button. Test a button okay. rather than just a link. Okay. You know what's interesting? I used to have a buy now button right underneath um, the demo, and it hardly ever got clicked. And then one night I was just sitting there writing all these things thinking, okay, what's going through their minds? And so I just kind of wrote this whole question and answer thing, and my conversions went way up. I know it, it seems like it's a long... Um, monotonous thing but for some reason they went way up and when I took that buy now button out and replaced it with this I got a lot of people who got to the very end of it or either scrolled down and clicked on that download um, button so it's kind of interesting but I'm gonna I'm gonna test it out both ways I'm gonna put in those um, put those buttons in again maybe not so big after each one of the questions great yeah, and I, I think the main thing I'm is, is figure out ways to make this a community thing. If people right. can upload 
their cookbooks, if they can upload testimonials, if they can upload their stories. Right. So you know, uh, they, if they, they may not have a website, but right, if right. you could, if you could be a repository for their heirloom cookbooks, and that people all over the world could celebrate Betty's life by making her uh, apple crisp. Yeah, no, that that's a good point. Because people would email me just on their own and say, "Thank you so much for your program. This was a cookbook for my late mother." And and you're right; they want it. They want their story to be told. You're absolutely okay. Here's one more thing. Um, this reminds me of like an NPR piece where somebody got it in their head to to do like social history through family cookbooks. Okay. Like that to me, that's really interesting. Right. 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 So why not make it you? Right, right. So, so, so make like this, like, well, like one, of the, one of the things I think about is, um, I, th I thought about this a lot on, when I was on airplanes watched, reading Sky Mall, that there were all these, like the last 10 pages were all um, like toys from Harry Potter and Lord of the Rings. And I was thinking like if you wanted to sell, you know, expensive wooden wands, you know, in 1996, how the hell would you do that? Well, you know, right. you'd write seven books about wands, mm -hmm. and then everyone would want to buy them. And kind of, you know, you could, you could get on NPR. You could, you could make your business secondary to mm -hmm. the project. Right. So a, fr uh, a friend of mine, um, Barry Levinson, up in, Ma in Madison, Wisconsin, has a, a mustard museum. Wow, interesting. Yeah, and it's actually a mustard store. He sells mustard. He has an online catalog, but he set it up as a museum, and he's got oh, free tastings and different mustards from all over the world, and he really is nuts about mustard. Mm -hmm. But in terms of the PR, it's, mm -hmm. it's a museum that happens to have a gift shop. Right. Right, really different from a gift shop that's just a standalone gift shop. So I think right. you, could really, no, you could really idea. turn yourself into a very – I don't want to say true. You could you could present yourself as a person with a really interesting story to tell about Americana. Right. Yeah, great angle. I like it. So, let's see if there's any other questions or thoughts from the question box. I don't see anything. Um, Nicholas says uh, there's another service called Lucky Orange, in addition to Crazy Egg. So okay. it de depends whether you you prefer you know fruit or fowl. Okay. Uh, Check them both out then for the visual analytics. Lucky Orange. Man, all the good names are taken. Yeah, there it is. All right, so Crazy Egg or Lucky Orange, whatever you like. Okay, um, excellent. All right, well, Pat, thanks for hanging in, and uh, thanks, thanks for, for the playing. Information. I appreciate it from everyone. All right, take care. Thank you. All right, so... Um, that's it for today. I will say if you found this valuable and I didn't get to you, um, I do this for a living. And uh, so one of the reasons I do this, obviously, is to uh, impress you and get the word out and put the, the, the thought in your head that uh, you might want to hire me. And there's lots of ways to do it. I, my favorite thing is um, coaching, where, it's, where we really look at the, in, in depth. And I'm not just the AdWords guy, but we're really looking at the whole business, at the marketing. Um, I love doing that. If you're interested, drop me a line and we can set up a, a chat to see if it would be a good fit. Uh, I also look at websites and, and do scorches like this privately. And as I, said, I have a, an agency, uh, Vitruvian Way, that in addition to um, the paid search, also does uh, conversion optimization. And we're, we're really good at it. Um, so if you have a site that you're looking to improve your conversion and you don't really want to do what I'm telling you, or you don't want to listen, or you don't want to learn anymore. Um, I'm very proud of the team we have that does that. Uh, drop me a line, um, Howie at AskHowie.com, and uh, you know, let me know what you're looking for, and I'll set you up. Otherwise, I want to thank everybody for for attending, and again, I want to apologize for my mess up about the time. Um, I'd like to say it won't happen again, but uh, all I can say is I will do my best to make sure it doesn't happen again. Um, thanks everybody if you have additional questions about anything you know how to find me and um, this replay should be up within a couple of days so thanks a lot everybody take care have a great week and I look forward to talking with you all again soon bye bye <laughs>